a 39 year old lady came to er with complaints of multiple episode of artery stools okay. since past 3 days associated with high grade intermittent fever with chills and rigor mm-hmm. since past 3 days she also complains of mild abdomen pain and one episode of vomiting no history of any recent travel okay no history of blood in stools dysuria and blood stain vomiting general examination patient was conscious and oriented well built and well nourished no pallor ictus sinuses clubbing lymphadenopathy respiratory rate of 18 per minute and pulse rate 95 per minute and spot is 100 percentage in room air bp 100 110 by 70 mm mercury no signs of dehydration mm mm-hmm. systemic examination what are the signs of dehydration that you want to look in for uh, strong and eyes okay then what are the signs of dehydration common signs of dehydration you said sangana is that are all late presentation so what is the most common one what you can skin. simply do skin skin okay skin target okay maybe in children we can use it very frequently but as the age increases suddenly it is difficult then dry tongue dryness of the tongue okay then you can ask for the history of how is the urine output thirst okay. thirst and urine output how is the urine output whether the, there is adequate urine output since last 6 uh, hours or 4 hours so these are all indirect evidences that you are giving that uh, this patient is having uh, decreased uh, perfusion or decreased dehydration signs of dehydration and uh, the most commonly you can actually classify dehydration into mild moderate and severe so mild moderate mild will be all those symptoms what do you said and moderate the, it will go on to the sanganize and severe even the patient can be comatose if the patient is severely dehydrated so all those things you need to check in in an adult patient uh, the simple things that what we can do in an op or in a bedside area will be to look in for the uh, ask for the history of thirst uh, look for the history of urine output and uh, dryness of the tongue that's a simple things what we can do and uh, what category there was you said my what was the amount of dehydration this patient had mild how did you say it is mild dehydration on what basis you are saying it is mild dehydration what was the positive finding for a mild dehydration in this patient what was the anything that uh, whether there was any sanganize as you said whether there was dryness of the tongue or whether uh, the uh, what was the dryness of tongue dryness of the tongue was there so on that basis you said there is a mild or some dehydration in pediatric age group dehydration categorization is totally different i am not going into that details pediatric is totally different management but here in an adult patient you felt that there is a mild uh, dehydration and uh, uh, this patient had a fever uh, episodes of fever and loose stools yes. that is the history that you have got so uh, fever loose stools one of the most common finding that you will get uh, Uh, into the ED or into the any of the OPD. So, uh, how will you tackle a patient with uh, probable uh, history of fever with uh, diabe- uh, with loose stools and uh, vomiting, multiple episodes of vomiting? We can we can call it as acute gastroenteritis, or whether it is a really an acute gastroenteritis or it is something else. May we can give IV fluids. Uh, no, no. My question is, how will you tackle such patients when it come to the your ed or into your opd see first of all you have to say that whether it is a real gastrointestinal infection the most common will be viral infections so depending upon the time of onset of the symptoms after whenever they have consumed some food materials from outside and they are coming to the ed usually bacterial viral these are the differential diagnosis that you keep the patient is coming immediately after consuming food with diarrhea and uh, what are diarrhea or loose stools it might not be a gastroenteritis as such it can be an anaphylaxis fever will not be there because very within hours the patient is coming back to the uh, coming to the ed after consumption of some food materials and they have got abdominal pain and uh, diarrhea and there can be some amount of vomiting so that can be an anaphylaxis simple anaphylaxis the next thing is that once they develop fever usually within 2 hours to 24 hours they will come to the ed with the history the most common etiology is being viral viral etiology is the most common one and you need to remember that viral there are a lot of viruses norovirus all those viruses there are a lot of vaccine preventable diarrhea rota virus and all is presently vaccine uh, is available for children definitely it is available for adult also who are at high risk they can take this vaccine then it whether it is a bacterial diarrhea the most important history that we wanted to elicit here whether there is any blood in stools 
if there is associated blood in stools then we need to our treatment management plan our etiology will be different usual viral infections will not cause blood in stools whenever you are thinking in terms of a bacterial infection definitely you need to consider to give an antibiotic that will cover that also whenever you are seeing blood in stool so simple thing patient coming to the uh, ear ed or in opd with acute features of acute gastroenteritis we have to say whether the patient is having whether it is a probably a viral or bacterial most common is viral then the role of antibiotics come you said uh, treating dehydration that will come to that but in an opd basis if there is only very minimal dehydration where the patient is able to take orally there is no point of giving any iv medications so our concern is first one the patient has got diarrhea and there is a lot of uh, water loss and electrolyte loss is there and next concern is what next concern is what they need energy also they are not taking adequate amount of energy because because of vomiting or whatever be the reason so we need to replace that also and then the fourth one you have to prevent and treat the disease and it should be prevented from going to the other patients so these are our concerns whenever the patient is coming to you so what all things you will do you said uh, iv fluids so you need iv fluids for all patients with dehydration no the patient is able to take orally that is enough oral rehydration solution is more than enough depending upon number of episodes of loose stool you can ask them to take orally but majority of the time they will not be satisfied so you might need to give iv so that is one of the reason why we are giving iv routinely all patient doesn't require iv medications iv medication sense iv fluids that's what i am meaning to so if at all you wanted to give any fluid what is the fluid of choice Uh, ringer lactate ringer lactate or plasmate any balanced crystalloids if you don't have ringer lactate normal saline is also good but ringer lactate will be an ideal fluid of choice why ringer lactate is ideal which is more physiological so that is why the reason ringer lactate or plasmate whichever balanced crystalloids that is available you can use that but you have to remember that that will not give any amount of energy to the patient so energy they need to either take orally or we need to supplement with an iv uh, dextrose or whatever beta so that thing you need to keep in your mind the next most important challenge will be what next important challenge will be what jare fluid electrolytes electrolyte imbalance so electrolyte imbalance which are electrolytes are you are concerned in this patient right now sodium sodium and potassium most importantly potassium there is lot of potassium loss that is going to happen so potassium correction needed to be done depending upon if the patient is associated vomiting and diarrhea so potassium needed to be corrected so that is the next electrolyte that you need to consider then what is the acid base disorder that you anticipate in such patients acid base disorder alkalosis see more of vomiting you can think it will be alkalosis if it is more of diarrhea it will be acidosis so diarrhea will be more in favor of acidosis metabolic acidosis vomiting it will be more in favor of metabolic alkalosis so that is a usual turn that you will see when the patient have multiple episode of vomiting they will go into metabolic alkalosis more of diarrhea they will go into metabolic acidosis so this is the acid base disorder that you will see very commonly in this group of patient so our concern here it is whether the patient require any iv medication iv fluids depending upon the severity if the patient is in hypotension there is no point in telling all those things they definitely need to be started on 20 ml per kg of fluid boluses and you need to treat hypotension separately and you need to treat the fluid loss also separately so that part is different i am telling here a stable patient who is able to take orally you can try with oral rehydration solution and after that if the patient is not able to take orally then only the indication for iv medications will come in iv fluids will come in and after that the, uh, you wanted to uh, treat this patient for the present illness so what will be the etiology factor you have found out that it's a probably an viral etiology you want to give any antibiotics no routinely there is no need of any antibiotics in case of an acute gastroenteritis only thing what you need to remember is that you need to have high adequate hydration and maybe you can give some uh, okay. drugs like probiotic agents like bifilac that is more than enough and rasica dotrel because we can which can uh, decrease the amount of fluid loss in each episode of diarrhea so these two drugs will be more than enough and if at all if you want to give some antibiotic if you want to give like if you are pretty sure it is an because there is a high risk cld patient and all if you want to give or it's a immunocompromised patient you don't want to prevent a secondary bacterial infection you can give a gut sterilizer drug like rifaximin 200 to 400 mg bd that is sufficient enough so once it the patient has got diarrhea and the patient has got significant amount of blood in stools then the treatment changes that patient might require definitely require an antibiotic so what is the spectrum of a disease that you need to cover here you need to cover a gram negative as well as an anaerobic so the drug of choice will be any of the quinolones 
with metronidazole or tenodazole, whatever be the agent available, but you have to cover there you have to remember that you have to cover anaerobic bacteria also which is there in the gut when whenever you're treating for anaerobic above the diaphragm it is clindamycin below the diaphragm is metronidazole is the agent of choice so gram negative organism quinolones will cover or you can go ahead with any of your cephalosporins ceftriaxone is equally good but you have to remember that whenever you have seen blood in stools you have to definitely think in terms of and anaerobic coverage and you need to add uh, metronidazole so that is the most important thing what you need to remember and always whenever you see blood in stool and fever for more than three days history take a blood culture you should not miss a typhoid so the early marker will be a typhoid you should not miss that a typhoid fever so these are all differential that you need to keep in mind whenever you are suspecting initially short term it will be a more of a viral but if it is persisting and the patient has got blood in stools always keep typhoid as one of your differential diagnosis and look for other parameters that is uh, suggesting that this patient is having probable typhoid initial one week there is no point in sending your uh, IgM or viral test that should be only done after that but initial phase you can go for the blood culture so that is what you have to do for typhoid fever then uh, then you have to admit the patient and do it accordingly so remember that these are the common uh, antibiotics that is required and another thing antiemetic you want to discharge a patient the most common mistake what we did in our general practice is that if we discharge the patient with pandoprazole and domperidone the patient has come with acute gastroenteritis so the patient will have subsiding vomiting will be over but he will come back again with episode of loose stool because domperidone is a prokinetic agent so you should not give for an acute gastroenteritis, pandoprazole with domperidone combination we should not give. You give pandoprazole and you give another antiemetic that is centrally acting antiemetic like uh, ondansetron or something you can give to this patient. So that is one thing what we commonly we think that we can give it as a combination so that it will be easy for the patient. But when you give pan D or whatever be the combination that is available, uh, they will come back with gastroenteritis, they will come back with loose tools. Always remember to supplement uh, with uh, Bifilac. And one common question is whether we can use loperamide. So loperamide is actually not recommended for any of this diarrhea. So loperamide is not at all recommended what will be the diarrhea. So when when will you suggest loperamide for a patient? So even if you want to give somebody who is very daring, who want to travel somewhere and uh, there is no other option, maybe you can give one dose of loperamide, not more than that. That is actually, there is not indicated, but it is for the patient's comfort for the during the travel, maybe you can give one tablet of loperamide. That is only what is indicated, but generally loperamide is not at all indicated in the management of any of this acute diarrhea. That will create more problems for the patient. So that is why it is not implicated. So a simple prescription that you can remember for any gastroenteritis may be a pandoprazole or any and uh, proton pump inhibitor or an H2 blocker may be OD with an bifilac BD or whatever be the probiotic agent and maybe a rifaximin 200 mg PD and an antiemetic like emicet if the patient has uh, vomiting on dancetron that should be sufficient and adequate oral rehydration should be more than enough for this group of patients but if the patient is having hypotension or patient is requiring IV you need to admit the patient and start on IV fluids and uh, depending upon uh, blood in stools you have to decide upon what antibiotic you need to give you need to cover gram negative and anaerobic coverage so what happened to this patient we gave uh, iv fluid and antibiotics mm, what antibiotic has been given and metrogel she had blood in stools no no blood in stools but why we are given metrogel maybe initially when we assess and later on i think we have stopped metrogel for this patient so only when we see this patient initially we think in terms of an uh, bacterial infection and we are given metrogel and we have stopped it late so these are the common things very commonly uh, seen condition is acute gastroenteritis but uh, we have to manage it appropriately okay thank you